check, check. Test one, test two. I don't know if I hear it through the video or not. But that's, I mean, you know. Test, test, check, check. Oh. Well, I can pop out the chat. That is kick ass. Oh, sign into chat. That's that's that sucks. I can hear my playback through your video. Or I hear the YouTube video through your thing, I guess. Oh, I must be hearing it now through YouTube because it's like, oh my gosh, oh, there's my face. Oh my gosh, do this lag right.
Oops. All right. Good people of Disc Golf Valley, what's up? Hopefully you can see me. Um, sorry, I'm watching the YouTube video too. I'm waiting for it to catch up just to kind of monitor. Okay, there we go. There I am. I wonder how far behind it is. Okay, I'm not going to look at my own video then because that's just going to mess me up. Um, all right, so this is this is meant to be viewable. It's meant to be archived. Okay, what up, Brock? It's meant to be archived, so I'm not going to like putz around for too much just so that we can kind of get to it. Um, for all y'all here, thanks for joining. Um, Daniel's audio is being a little goofy. So um, he's kind of uh, in my ears right now to read some comments and uh, help with the stream, obviously. You know, he's a great videographer. Uh, if you haven't seen his YouTube videos, I mean, we're on his channel right now. Super informative, great content, um, just really quality stuff. So I hit him up like maybe over a month ago now, seeing if someone like myself with zero experience, uh, if he would be willing to help me do something like this. At the time, you know, he was pretty honest about, oh, I've never done a live stream, um, but you know, we're figuring it out and we're having a lot of fun putting this together. So I hope this is something that y'all find informative. Um, you know, this community is super strong and I've always wanted to find a way to give back a little bit rather than just feeling like, um, you know, taking and using all the resources that are out there, you know, um, fun fact, I taught disc golf at a summer camp years ago 
And it was before I knew any like rules or anything, but it was really fun to kind of go through that process of, you know, like what is form and, and all this and like, so, you know, figuring some of that out from scratch because I had never watched a form video before. Um, so, you know, I've been playing this game long enough to not be a total noob and I'm hoping I can share just some of what I've learned with you all. And I hope that's informative. Um, and, and Daniel, I'm sure feels the same way. Um, but he wants to be a little bit behind the scenes, which is cool. He's going to be, like I said, just in my ear, kind of helping me lead this for you all. So I have, I have a lot of notes and what I'm kind of imagining, I'm going to have gameplay up on the screen here in a minute. Uh, y'all can play along with me. I'm going to go to certain holes. I'll call them out. Um, and we can just kind of talk about risk management. Um, you know, there's a big difference between playing the daily challenge and playing the pro tour. You know, I don't know if, if some of y'all feel this way, but you know, you log on and you do the daily challenge and you try and like play it through once just to kind of get a feel for it. Um, and then, you know, maybe you nail it that first time through and it feels good. Um, and then you start going for these like hero lines and then, you know, but that's a totally different feeling than playing the pro tour and feeling like can't make a single mistake. And then, you know, but then that's like a kind of catch 22, right? You're thinking about how do I not mess up? And then inevitably you mess up. So like, that's something that really is interesting to me. And I'm hoping it's interesting to y'all. And, you know, I've thought of, you know, in my own kind of game plan, there's things I think of that I'm aware of that help me avoid losing strokes. And um, one of those things is just making decisions easier. You know, there's a wind you haven't encountered before, you know, uh, there's a lie, you know, off the tee on like maybe a three shot hole that you've never been on before. And you're trying to figure out how to get to the basket and be safe. Um, and it's a lot to kind of think about in the moment, you know, and have that pressure. So like, I'm hoping some of these notes make it easier to make those decisions in the moment. Um, you know, everyone plays this game differently. So I'm going to show you some of my lines but it's really not about like the lines I'm throwing. It's more about like what I'm thinking of when I'm choosing my disc and my shot, you know? So what I really don't want is just to have a bunch of Reese copycats out there. Uh, I want you all to, you know, hopefully have a better line than me, you know, have something that you can grow or build on. You know what I mean? Um, you want something that suits your bag, you know, but it really helps to be mindful of what can go wrong. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about. So Rit uh i didn't know what you just said daniel i'm sorry um okay okay just full disclosure your audio is like back to what it was doing before and i can barely understand you at all so um i don't know why that's going on but i'm sorry we're just flying by the seat of our pants but we're gonna make it work um, do you need me to stand by while um, gameplay is like where my Twitch stream is put on this, the, the stream? Okay, I'm about to start. So if you want to go ahead and get that prepared, um, I can just get right into it. You know, I'll be talking a little bit. So it's okay if it doesn't pop up like immediately. All right. So. Um, Let's go to Ikigai Springs 8. This is going to be one of the first holes. Uh, I am. Is it not showing? Oh, shoot. It, it went away. Okay. Hang on. Let me get back on. 3 8. Go live. Stream. Next. I didn't think I turned it off, but I'm going live right now. Okay. Lefty lines are still. And that's a great point. Um, this will still be applicable with a lefty line, you know. Um, I'm hoping to not, kind of like what I said, I'm not dictating what what you throw. I'm just helping you understand kind of what can go wrong. Um, so hopefully it gives you some ideas for thinking outside the box and, you know, making it work. Can you see my uh, stream now, Daniel? I'm live, or at least I should be. 
All right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, dude. I got you. Okay. You, you said you can see it now? Okay, cool. All right, let's get into it. So we're talking about, you know, risk management. So the first thing, you know, it's is a lot of the stuff might feel like kind of obvious, but I still want to talk about it because um, I think it's worth, you know, observing, you know, just like kind of those obvious things. Sometimes, you know, there's water all around, but you still end up in the water at times. So, you know, where is the danger? You're on a tee, you know, you're thinking of what you're about to do, and it helps to know where the danger is. Um, and danger is like different things for sure. So like on Ikigai Springs 8, there's a lot of water everywhere. That's obvious danger. You know, you go OB, there's a drop zone, you lose a stroke, that sucks. Um, there's trees, you know, trees make you fall in the water. Um, there isn't out of bounds on this hole, but out of bounds is something to be aware of. And then mandatories are another one of those things that, you know, it's like, it's like the absolute, like, you know, um, yeah, there, there's end of discussion. You want to avoid all that stuff. Um, so, you know, thinking of a hole like this, you know, we're clearing the water. Um, you know, how are we going to bring danger? What up, Mr. Boyka? Um, we want to make sure we're avoiding danger at all costs. So like clearing the water is important. We aren't throwing a river, you know, we want to clear. I like a sapphire for this. Um, but you know, like, am I throwing a, maybe, you know, in the past when this hole first came out, I was throwing like a forehand thinking that was really cool. Um, but it, you know, there's like, you're bringing even more danger into play, um, with something like this. You know, you can get lucky. I want to talk about luck a little bit too, you know, but we don't want to be relying on luck. We want to avoid danger. Um, here, I'm going to actually go to Frozen Valley too real quick because I think that might be a better place to start. Okay. So where is there danger? Uh, water, dangerous. <laughs> we don't want to go in the water. Um, ice also dangerous because it leads to water. Um, Dan Sackett, what up? You know, there's these are obvious things. Um, but then, you know, some things that kind of, so you choose a line that you think is great, right? Like, like I'm going to, I'm going to throw this and then we're going to see what happens. Um, okay. So I'm going for the land, but am I going to stick? I don't. So, you know, some people would call that bad luck. You know, I kind of, I, I would choose to call that like a bad line, you know? Um, and that's, that's the bigger kind of discussion is where is their luck? Um, luck is ground play. Luck is bushes. Luck is, you know, get, having a barrier keep you in bounds. Um, there's just all sorts of things, you know, uh, I mean, there's, there's luck that you can't help, like there's spit outs and things, but this is, you know, we're trying to control our luck as much as possible. I think like usually when you're in a pro tour and something crazy happens, it feels like you just got, you know, shafted by the game, you know, or the game just took a stroke back from you. But if you can control luck as much as possible, then that leads to more predictable outcomes, you know, for better or worse. We don't want to rely on good luck. We want to hopefully eliminate bad luck as much as possible. So how do we do that on a hole like this? Um, so my personal play is to avoid the ice because as we saw, you know, ice leads to kind of unpredictability. Um, so just for example, I'm gonna like lay up to the left side and I'm gonna play to clear the ice. Um, again, this isn't just to show you what my line is, but we're talking about avoiding danger. So this is an example of that. Um, okay, so second shot, you know, we're talking about luck. We're talking about where's the danger. Water is danger. Uh, if you, you know, you can imagine like 
whatever, we're throwing like maybe 600 feet to clear the ice. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to air it over. You're going to have some hyzer out. So you can kind of imagine what might happen if I get, take my glide skip and I do a straight pullback. Um, it's going to go into the water. It's going to skip off the ice. So like, you know, I like a glide turn. I'm using this cloud breaker right now. It's kind of fun. So this is going to turn. It's going to hold straight. Um, see, I like to avoid these rocks because you never know what you're going to get. You're going to get a bounce backwards. See, bad luck. I always try to like get to the right of those if I can help it. And take that out of play. If I get a little lucky, maybe I'll just like hyzer out even before them. But that's not something I want to rely on. Um, so that's a little bit of what I'm talking about here. Let's go to downtown number three. This is a hole that to me has just goofy freaking ground play. And I can't really put my finger on it, but I used to go high here and my disc would always slide down the hill. Well, not always, but there were times it would just slide down the hill. And, you know, it's cost me, it, it did cost me a pro tour. And I was like, this is like BS. Like, I'm tired of like having this like maybe skippy ground play. Like, how am I going to avoid it? And so I had to go back and say, all right, how do I remove that from the equation? How do I not rely on, see, yeah, that's not so bad, but, but how do I not rely on something like good ground play, you know? And to me, the answer was aim low, you know, use the hill to your advantage. Um, so I'm still relying on ground play, but I'm throwing a slower disc and I'm going kind of at the ground straight on. So since I started doing this, like, like I could count on one hand the amount of times I've gotten just the, this, the most absolute horrible break and it's like skidded all the way down. But it's a better line for me for that reason. Um, avoiding luck, avoiding things like that. Um, let's see. I have another hole here I want to talk about. KO Park number six. So what, what I love about this new multiplayer is seeing how people attack holes. And the, you know, I think there's a kind of, it's, it's easy, you know, when you're, when you're on the T of a hole and you're thinking, how am I going to attack this basket? There's like, there's an, there's a direct line. Yeah. There is a wind glide in there. Um, you know, there's a direct line, like there's a simple line, which I love the simple line because it reduces, you know, the decisions you need to make. Yeah, I have a wind glide. I do not have a light glide in right now. Um, I'm playing around with that. But yeah, you're on a tee and you want to make a simple decision because that makes it easier in the moment, right? That's kind of all I'm talking about. But there's like a simple decision that can lead to like more danger, right? Like this is not a difficult shot to make. You have an aim point and you just kind of throw it. Um, this wind isn't very good right now. Well, I might actually clear. But I, I see a lot of people just you know, you hit a branch, you get a bad sway, you're dependent on luck with a shot like this, which is, you know, it sucks. It's great for a competitor like myself who always likes to go wide because I see someone take the simple gap and maybe it doesn't work out. And then you're forced to take the same gap again to hope, you know, on the second time you try, uh, you get through. So um, for a hole like this, it's, it's, you know, the layup is, I think, the smartest way to play it. And, you know, when, when you're, when we're talking about where is there luck, like this is super lucky. You can hit this gap. I mean, I just hit it twice right now. Um, but, you know, if you're like playing a pro tour, what's going to hurt worse? You know, is it going to hurt getting a birdie because you played safe or is it going to hurt getting a par because you went for the eagle? Um, and that's a decision you need to make. But personally, it's, I get way more pissed off when I, you know, <laughs> go for something aggressive. I really didn't have to, um, long is danger. So yeah. So we're talking about where's their danger. There's out of bounds straight ahead. You have to play a high hyzer, you know? So when I was finding a way to like match the, the curve of the fairway, like that was something I had to figure out, like, where's my aim point? Where's my margin of error? Um, wind is important, but margin of error is, is another one of those things, you know, when you're talking about luck, it's impossible to avoid all possible things. Um, so you have to choose, you know, you have to pick your battles a little bit. 
And that's why I don't like taking a short gap because a margin of error um, brings those tree limbs into play. You know, the margin of error here is maybe I hit a branch and I fall straight down. Okay. Maybe I go a little long. I mean, with this wind, it's not really like, it's going to be hard for me to push long. So here we go. So this is my line. You know, it's high, so it stalls. This has a chance to not be close enough for me to make the putt, which is like the downside. You know, maybe I'm like 150 feet away and I can't throw in for eagle. I mean, this is 95 feet, which is well within my range, but that might not be the range for like everybody out there. So, um, you know, when you're figuring it out, you have to, and that's another point I want to make is playing for a putt. You know, um, this line is great because you can park the basket and that's, that makes the putt really easy. It makes it simple. Um, but let's see, here we go. Here's the tree limb. Um, but you can get an eagle without parking it. And so for me, I would much rather take the gamble of birdie rather than the gamble of par, if that makes sense. Um, so here we go again. And then, yeah, that's going to be about 90 feet again. So again, this is a choice, but this is also, okay, it's a little longer, but that's kind of what I'm getting at is like, if I miss this, I mean, that's going to, that's going to suck, but that's not going to be nearly as annoying to me as if I went for, you know, cutting across the water, you know, things can go wrong, but what might go wrong won't lead to like a par versus, you know, just a birdie. So I hope that makes sense. I, you know, um, the wind is important, you know, obviously on that hole, um, it kind of determines whether you, you need to lay up or not. Um, like if the wind is a big head, I'm not, I'm just going to lay up, like I'm not going for it, but you know, when you're making a choice on wind, it helps to know what's up. So a shot, like a hole like this, you know, this is a, this is a par five. We're going for Eagle, you know, almost always, uh, it helps to know what the wind is doing when you're driving the basket, this wind is neutral. So it kind of doesn't matter, but, um, okay, here we go. So. This is kind of like a head cross, but it's going to be like a full headwind driving the pin. Um, this is something professional disc golfers think about. It does help me to kind of be mindful of this as well. You want to set up, you know, an easy approach. This hole has danger. So yeah, where's the danger on this hole? Let's practice. So there's this tree like right in front of me. I don't want to hit that. There's OB left. There's hazard traps. Um, in a neutral wind, this hazard trap long, I know a glide skip can reach that. So I usually don't go glide skip off the tee unless there's a headwind because I know this won't, you know, push into that. Um, and I want to be close to this OB line. So, you know, this is where you're weighing the danger versus, um, you know, you're weighing, you're weighing the danger. You know, how close do you want to play it? How aggressive are you? Um, if this was a pro tour and I was winning and I didn't want to lose, I didn't want to par on this hole, like, Maybe I'm resigned to laying up, you know, I can go glide skip here and just play what I know is a safe shot. And like, that's cool. And, you know, I'm avoiding luck. I'm not in the bushes. You know, I'm not going to be close to the OB line where I could cut roll. Um, I'm just doing something that I know will yield me a birdie. Um, if I'm playing a little bit more aggressive, maybe I'm taking this inside line and trying to avoid the tree, but you know, you can't help it. Um, so yeah, how are you how are you gonna play this? I know people go roller, roller to me can be touchy. So if we're just going for like a kind of stock shot, that's what you want. You wanna like not overthink it. I know we're kind of overthinking it right now, but like you don't wanna self-sabotage. You wanna like make a smart choice. So this is a prime example. So the approach to the the pin, you know, 440 feet isn't so bad for a glide skip, but this four headwind will mean we get stuck in a sand trap. So Lay up to the right of the sand trap. This is another one of those choices that playing multiplayer, I'm always like so surprised just how many people drive the basket and don't just aim to the right, you know. Um, granted, this isn't like a gimme, especially in a four wind. But like if I would have thrown straight at the basket, I'd be in the middle of the trap right now. So um, yeah, like like it's just a it's just a decision, 
you know, like, and normally I don't even like to drive the basket just cause you, you get a dud skip and you wind up in the sand trap. Like, yes, that's bad luck. But like, I chose to throw through the sand trap knowing I would need a skip to get out. So it's just one of those things where, again, you know, I'm choosing to not incorporate luck until like a decision I'm making, you know, I don't want to rely on it. Um, see if I can make this almost it's all good. Um, oh, thanks, Greg. Appreciate that, dude. Um, I'm sorry, the whole, you know, first 30 minutes of this video was kind of like shenanigans, us like fumbling through it. But, you know, you can, you can cut through that. So the wind, the wind's important. And I think wind is something that uh, even as an advanced player screws with me all the time, you know, you make a judgment for the wind and it can do something different than what you expect. But like, if we're talking fundamentals here, you know, what does wind do? Um, so this is like a head crosswind. When I was newer at this game, I thought two winds didn't matter. I thought it was basically the same as a one where it was just like, oh yeah, it's like not blowing that hard. Like it doesn't matter. But like these winds matter. Like like every wind that's not neutral, like a one is super important. I know one winds matter too, but you know, like draw the line a little bit on analyzing some things. So we got a two end. Where's the danger on this hole? There's OB line along this left side. We are throwing over it. Um, this is kind of where my strategy comes in. I always prefer a straight pullback if possible. That's one less thing for me to think about and kind of be touchy with. Um, what up, Alex? Glad you made it, dude. Um, so, you know, I like I like a straight pullback. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought a little bit. If you if you like doing something like playing wide and going around, you could totally do that. My stream went black. Okay, here let's see if I can get my Twitch going again. But I'll talk about wind for a second. So, um, you know, headwind is going to slow your disc down. It's going to turn you over if you're aiming low. It's going to lift if you're aiming high. It's it's a little tricky to judge, but those are things that you want to be like mindful of. Um, I'm starting my broadcast again. Three, two, one. All right, Twitch stream is live one more time. Let's see if that settles it. Um, so this is kind of like a, you may not be able to see my screen quite yet, but it's a two head left to right. This is pushing Anheuser for me. So this is going to turn my disc over and slow my disc down. Um, Let's see what else we can get. So an even stronger head left to right. This is cool. So when you're making a decision on a hole like this, you know, I'm sure most of all of you have played this hole where you clip a tree, uh, you get bad ground play, you end up short. You know, how are we going to avoid that? Well, there's like a little gap in these trees. You know, maybe that's the fairway that we're looking for. That's the gap we want to hit. Um, you know, I have a... Cut the black again. Jeez. Okay. Um, let's see. So we want to be mindful of wind. Let's see how I can put this without you even like seeing my screen. Um, you want to you want to know how the wind is going to affect your disc. Um, and and for me, just because I always tend to underestimate the wind, I've gotten in this habit of. Okay, I'm going to like overestimate the wind right now. I'm going to see what happens when I, you know, overcompensate. And, and you know, surprisingly, I feel like that usually works better, you know, playing. But that's, that's like my own kind of mental thing. Like, I think everybody's got to, um, you know, that, that's not something you can calculate. Like, like you know. 10% more hyzer, you know, like that isn't, that isn't possible. So you just got to feel it out. I'm back. Epic. Okay. Let's go back to Oak Hill number five. Cool. Let's see what the wind is doing this time. This is neutral. Actually it would have been nice to have a neutral wind. Let's see if I can find it again real quick. So you can kind of see, yikes. One more time if not then it's all good okay tight so i'm just going to show you like a generic line so i'm going for this gap in the trees it's a one wind 
I already know my aim point, but I'm being mindful of the danger. I'm gonna clear OB. I'm trying to clear these trees and like hit that just like that perfect gap in the canopy. I'm gonna be a little left of that, but that's I know my margin of error. I know that if I miss my gap, I'm still gonna get close enough to the basket to where it's fine. And I did, you know. Um, so I have my aim point already. If there's a wind, I'm gonna have to adjust that aim point and adjust my play maybe a little bit. So it's a two. So if I do the exact same thing, I don't change anything. It's gonna turn a little bit more. Yeah, see, there it is. It's still gonna be fine because like that's within my margin of error, but I'm definitely shorter up on the basket. Let's see what else I got. Exact same. I want to get something that's not a headwind so I can show you what a tailwind I'll just will screw with your flight path. Um, so crosswind pushing Anheuser turns it over. Crosswind pushing Heiser, it's going to be more lift. Um, I mean, this is fine. This is going to this is going to give me a lift. It's going to slow me down a lot. So this is my original aim point. Um, again, you know, you kind of have to feel this out for yourself, but we're being mindful of the danger. So I'm going to go glide skip now because I know that here i'll just go ahead and show you what would happen turned over even more this is a windbreak so it's still like kind of online it's like a lot shorter which maybe i can make that putt and like maybe that's something you want to you know reckon with um but i'm gonna go glide skip here and keep my same aim point it's gonna turn over a good bit so that's the that's the little gap in the trees i'm talking about so that's like my that's you know my choice. I mean, I know it's an easy decision on a hole like this, but you get to a hole like Frozen Valley two, and there's like a three headwind, and you know you have to kind of make that same choice. Like I'm compensating for that. How am I avoiding danger? You're avoiding the same danger, but you know that's something you need to be mindful of. Let's see. Okay, so with all those things, you know, what's the safest way to get a putt? You know, we want to avoid danger and luck, um, you know, either using wind to our advantage or just trying to mitigate it. Getting a putt is what we want. You know, in real life disc, disc golf, you know, you want to be inside the circle because that's obviously where you're probably going to make a putt. You know, fortunately, fortunately, we're playing a game where you can putt from like 100 feet. Um, and that's, you know, within my range of what I'd call easy. Right. So. A hole like this where where's the danger you know there's ob on the left there's ob on the right uh, there's water there's a lot of trees you know so if we're thinking of what can happen the most and there's also bushes behind the basket you know so i know a lot of people throw a roll disc here um when you're talking luck i mean i have my roll discs stand up and turn and and they don't always roll so like you can end up in the bushes and then you're throwing in blind you know, I prefer to take that out of play. I'd rather just get a putt because I know 60 feet isn't that big a deal for me. So what do we do? We go around, you know, I'm avoiding all the danger. It's slow. You know, I get ground play. It settles before the river. I'm actually like 40 feet away. So it's like just as close as if I went over the water, you know, um, to me, that's like a no brainer choice. Like that's a choice I'll take, you know, basically all the time. I and mean, even with a wind like this, you know, what could go wrong? Okay, the wind might push you far OB. The wind might throw you off your flight path and you might hit a tree early. Um, maybe you turn it over because it's kind of like a head cross. You know, there's all sorts of things that can go wrong. But I'm looking at the, the route with the least amount of danger. To me, it's just, once again, you know, going out to the right. And, you know, this is like really wide, but, you know, how far away am I going to be? Like 80 feet? Yeah. So it's really like not that big a deal. Um, I'd rather take an 80 footer than uh, poop. Yeah, see, there's a little bad luck. Yeah, C2 in Disc Golf Valley is basically like 120 feet. Like that's where it's like, it can get a little iffy. 100% um, agreed there. So there you go. So that's my line on that hole. And you know, those are the decisions I made to choose that flight path you know a lot of people don't bag a pioneer so just for example you know if you want to do something like that with your sapphire um maybe you're powering it down 
Maybe you're aiming a little higher so that it, you know, or maybe you're aiming lower so it doesn't travel as far. But even like a putt like this is going to be like 90 feet away. And if you're comfortable doing something like that, just to know that you're avoiding all danger, then I think that's a smart choice personally. So, and there's, there's other going to be other holes where you're bringing in danger, like kind of unnecessarily. Um, so let's go back to Oak Hill. This is one, I know people love running the green on this, but I just can't bring myself to do it because of all the bad ground play I've had, um, you know, you throw it here. I don't have a light glide in my bag right now, but let's just, let's just see what happens. So you clear the water. I'm not even going to clear because I don't have a light glide, but you know, maybe you skip off the left side of the green. Um, like this side over here, you hit a little early, you skip off into the water. You're making a birdie putt. Um, you know, maybe you hit the green too fast and you slide off the backside. That would happen to me. Um, maybe you hit cage cause you almost ace it and then you roll back into the water. I mean, those are all things that like can go wrong. Um, to me, yeah, to me, I just like laying up, you know, like this is, I'm not bringing any danger into play. I mean, there's trees right here. I know what I'm doing. Um, Obviously this is dependent on throwing in, but I would rather, oops, put a little bit too much heat on that. I would rather have a throw in than, I've missed my comebackers from like trying to stick the island, you know, like that stuff hurts. I'd rather have an easy birdie than a, you know, a dumb one, I guess, you know, that plays to your confidence. It's gonna help you kind of be more, I don't know. I've heard, I've heard people like Jerem and Nate talk about this, where like you choosing to lay up builds confidence. Like you made a choice to play a shot and that's like a positive impact on your mental game. You know, maybe you still take a par, but imagine like instead of laying up, you know, you miss a putt and then you have to make a comeback or maybe you make the comebacker, which is great, but you know, like, oh, if I didn't make that comebacker, I'd be screwed. Like that's one of those things, you know, you're setting yourself up for, success you know that's what you want so to me laying up does that avoiding danger i'm playing smart golf um that's what's up arthur thanks for being our first sub boy love that <laughs> um so we don't have to park it that's the first thing i'm talking about to get a putt you don't have to park it you know to get eagle you don't have to park it um taking the biggest gap is another thing that I think is just huge, you know, cause we're talking about mitigating risk, mitigating danger. Um, there's holes where like, literally I'll just, you know, throw it straight up in the air because that's where the biggest gap is. And this one to me is one of those holes. Grizzly Gulch nine is another one where I play like over the trees, like just straight up. And then with a, you know, with a disc like this, that doesn't have a lot of fade. It just kind of like settles nicely. Um, you know, you can play low, you know, where's the danger? There's an OB line. I think a lot of people, I used to throw the play where it's like forehand over the OB and then it fades back. Um, again, you are you know, you can mess it up. Sometimes you skip all the way to the other side. You know, the ground play on this hole is really bad. You know, I prefer to just kind of like toss it up there. And, you know, if it turns over a little bit too much, what's my margin of error? Like, well, it's you know, just going to slightly fade back into the fairway. Um, if I kind of sky it a little bit too much, like if I don't, uh, see if I can get it to do what I want. If it, if it stalls too much, you know, I'm still middle of the fairway. Um, so to me, that's like reducing the amount of obstacles, you know, it's, it's not as fun as like piping, just like a low shot or something like that, but you're just kind of setting yourself up, you know, so over the OB, it's just a little bit more dangerous. I think it's hard to deny that that has more danger. So again, make your own line, make your own choices. I mean, you could even play, I was kind of playing with like a low line here too. Like you can do all sorts of things on this hole. Um, and you can be, you know, clear of danger, but it's just about kind of what makes sense for you. You know, recoil down there would probably do really well. If it's a big headwind. Maybe I'm doing the forehand. Um, but 
you know, take the biggest gap. It would be my advice. Um, it has the biggest margin of error. It's the same for Keho Park 6. You know, I'm talking about, you know, throwing over the water versus throwing over the fairway. Yeah, the normal physics are huge on these courses. Um, that was, it was draining. It was mentally draining trying to like figure out where the luck was when it felt like the ground play was just so terrible. But, you know, talking about Keho Park 6, you know, we're going to go back to taking the biggest gap. Hope I got the hole right. I'm ter I have a terrible memory with some of these sometimes. Yeah, totally. So take the biggest gap. You know, the least amount of things I feel like can go wrong by going over here versus taking this little skinny one. You know, same as in real life. You know, taking the skinny gap on a course, you know, a larger chance you're going to miss it. Okay, so, you know, let's recap slightly. I know I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but we want our line to be simple. We want it to be repeatable. We want to avoid danger and luck. Uh, we want to be mindful of the wind. And we're just trying to get a putt at the end of the day. We're not trying to park it. So, you know, once you have all those things, is your line simple? Um, are you mindful of danger? Like, can you do it again? You know, is it a line that you can replicate? Like, as I'm talking about here, you know, maybe it's hard to replicate this line because of the sway, you know? Is it easier to replicate a line like this, you know? Um, I would argue that it is. I'll probably just like fluff this thing. But it's easier to replicate a line like this because the fairway is wider, you know? There's, uh, <laughs> there's less things in your way, so. Yes, I would say this line is more easily replicated. Um, but you know, you're going to get to holes like, like that are on the beast where you're you're just kind of like it's a hope and a prayer, you know. But there's going to be other courses where let's go. This is where I want to be. Harring Woods number six. Um, perfect. So this is a hole that for the longest time, I would just take my glide, roll, rive, and just blast it right down the middle. And, you know, um, it works, you know, it works like most of the time, but there's times it doesn't work. You know, you get a bad sway. It's going so fast, you kind of hit an early rock. You know, maybe you get bad, bad ground play. Like things can go wrong on this one. Um, so when you're talking about easily replicated, I felt like it wasn't always didn't always feel like I was making a conscious choice to put the disc where I wanted. It felt like sometimes the disc was just going where it wanted to. Um, so a disc like a Sapphire where it's accurate modifier. Um, I know MM93 throws a skip grace here. Uh, that's another great example of, you know, using something with an accurate modifier to put it where you want. I know it doesn't help my case. That I just hit that stinking rock, but I think you get the idea. You know, almost all of us are bagging accurate discs if it's uh, a fairway driver or below um, because, you know, they hit gaps a lot better. And that's kind of the point here. We're hitting a gap. You know, what's in our control? You know, just pretty much where we put the shot. I mean, there's, when we're talking about relying on luck with the glide roll rive, I felt like I was relying on my bounce. I was relying on the fact that I was going to either get a good bounce off this left side, which I did just now, but I could have easily just dropped straight down or kicked to the left. Same with like, hoping I don't turn it over too much, you know, cause I can hit that tree, I can settle down. They're just things that can go wrong. So when you're choosing, you know, the shot for the hole. Yeah, you wanna be mindful of that stuff. And then yeah, I heard, or I see Dan shouted out Keho Park 2. That's one that I definitely wanna talk about. It's on my list. So you're on the tee pad. This wind sucks. So, but this is this is a really interesting hole for wind because from the tee pad, the wind is different than when you're like approaching the basket if you're playing it for the layup. So where's the danger? I mean, it's pretty obvious that there's all this OB right here. There's a lot of trees in there. You know, that is very lucky. I mean. This is another one of those holes in a multiplayer I see people go for. Sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. You know, I have my line, you know, for what I hope is dialed as good as it could be, but that doesn't mean I'm going to hit it every single time. Um, so being mindful of those things, you know, what's the smart play here? How can we ensure, you know, how can we be 100% sure that we get the best score possible? 
Um, for me, it's just throwing through the biggest gap. You know, where's the biggest gap? Like, hello, it's right here. Um, now, being mindful of danger, you know, there's sand traps on this hole. There's a sand trap like right around the corner here. I've ended up there a ton of times. Um, you can go too straight. You know, if I was going like glide turn right now or like cloud breaker, I could easily end up in that sand trap long left on a forehand. Um, so if I'm being smart, this wind is going to push me around the corner. I'm going to go glide skip. I'm going to take the biggest gap. I know it's going to hyzer because of this tailwind. It's going to hyzer a lot. If I want to be clear of this corner. I don't want to get caught up in those trees. Um, I'm going to put it high so that the tailwind pushes it. So something I kind of want, like as you're making these decisions, it, it for, to me at times feels like a game of guess who, right? I don't know if y'all played that game where there's, you, you have an opponent and you have a bunch of faces in front of you. You each have one of those faces that's yours, you know, quote unquote, and your opponent's trying to guess, you know, which face is yours. So you're saying, oh, mine doesn't have glasses. Mine doesn't have a mustache. You know, mine has a hat on. Um, and this is this feels like that, right? Like through process of elimination, I can say this is the shot that I want to throw, and that's kind of what I'm getting at. You want to eliminate the possibilities. You want something with a wide margin of error, so that you know when you accidentally calculate something wrong, the consequence of that miscalculation isn't like you're losing a ton of strokes. Uh, boom, and so like you know. Eagle in a four wind is great, you know, especially in like a headwind. I could have easily been throwing, you know, three, four times off the tee. Um, you know, this this line right here isn't a gimme. I know what I want to do. I'm going to be dependent on not missing just all these freaking trees. Ooh, that was so close to missing. And that's, and you know, and it happened on Hops and Heiser, right? Like I had, I had one round that was 20 down. You know, I, I barely missed a tree. See, look at this. This has actually never happened to me, but I just pushed long on this hole. Um, you know, you have you have 19 down, you, or sorry, you have 17 down. What up, Charlie? Thanks for joining us, dude. Disc Golf Alley Royalty here right now. Um, but you're playing, the you're, you're trying to get the 20 or the 40 or the 60 or whatever, and you, you're dependent on luck, you know. Um, you have your line. You just have to hope that you hit it. And so, you know, when I when it was Val League and it was the finals, you know, the play was we're not going for the albatross on this hole because it's worth more for us to know we get an eagle than to maybe get an albatross. And and that's a kind of way of thinking that is hard to cultivate because I know it's really easy, you know, when this when a hole like this comes up in multiplayer and it's a favorable wind and you're just like like you know, you just want to hit that line so bad. You know, it's like it's like playing disc golf in real life. It's a big downhill tee shot, and you're like, I just want to rip it. Like, I just want to rip this shot so bad. And I get that feeling in the game too, where I'm just like, it's taking all of my freaking strength to not just go roller and get an albatross. But like, there's times when it's just it's, you're just better for it. You know. So here, this wind is better for kind of showing maybe like a normal layup play for me. So it's not a crazy tail. It's going to push me towards this bunker that I know is down here. Um, this is not a pushing tailwind. So it's possible that I could end up in this corner stuff if I'm not careful. So I'm going to play this wide, you know, thinking of the wind going towards the basket on my second shot, it's actually helping me out. So if I end up like a little bit too far left or too far back, I know the wind is going to help me clear the corner and get all the way to the basket. So I'm really, what I'm worried about most is this corner right here and that bunker. So I'm going to play this safe. I'm not going to push long on a forehand. Um, and I haven't really tried this shot with this disc. I'm just being kind of, I'm taking those educated guesses. That was really close. So, you know, that's, that's my kind of, guesstimation right that's my best guesstimation of what could happen and i was a little bit wrong but not terribly wrong so in a multiplayer round i know my margin of error is like there um but you know when you're practicing lines i like practicing in you know where else like practice mode but like if you're if you're just kind of trying stuff over and over you know you want to take note of of 
where your shots are going, you know, how far off your line are you when something goes wrong? Um, what up, Mark? Thanks for joining us, dude. So yeah, you want to be mindful of just, you know, where are your mistakes? And that's like a hard thing sometimes because you got to be self-aware, but, but yeah, don't be too hard on yourself. You know, we're all students of the game. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure everyone was hoping everyone else would go for the albatross while you secretly just like get eagle. I remember seeing uh, the scores in Valley League and seeing, oh, it's a bunch of eagles. Like it must be, you know, Keho Park six or something. And it was like, it was this hole, it was hole number two. And just thinking like, dang, everyone's like showing such restraint. Like no one's, no one's going for the hero shot. You know, love to see it. Um, so, you know, the whole point of me starting on this tangent was, is your line simple, easily executed and able to be repeated? And I would kind of say, you know, if I was in practice mode right now, which I am, I would just be throwing this a few times. I wouldn't go to my second shot, my second lie. I would just kind of throw the shot out a few and see kind of what happens. I wouldn't adjust for sway. I would just kind of toss it out. Where's my margin of error? I'm glad they left the lines on the screen here so that you can see just the the kind of, I don't want to call it a bell curve, but you see just like all, all the possibilities, you see the history of just what happened. This might be in danger of the sand trap. And so what I would do, you know, if I'm trying to find a line that I like, I'm kind of looking at my grouping of shots. I'm seeing where the outliers are. You know, there's always going to be something that goes wrong that may be out of your control. So like, Nine times out of 10, if a shot works, usually I can chalk that up to, you know, just some horrible luck. You know, uh, sometimes I have a line that I, that just needs to be like, like hundred percent perfect. And like, this is a hole where it's hard to do that while still being in like a position for the Eagle. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of not changing my aim point. I'm just tossing it out. You can see kind of where the widest shots have landed. All of them are safe. You know, the one that's far right is like a little close to being in that sand trap. So maybe I'd take note of that. Maybe I'm going to aim a little bit further left. Um, this disc isn't long enough to go into that sand trap long. So really to me, like maybe the smarter move is to play it like way wider, you know? And maybe, you know, I'm going to try a different disc. Like let's try a different disc and see what happens. These are all things I would be doing if I was trying a line for a new hole. I know I definitely had to do this for Highlanders Ridge. So like, that's also cool. Like that's a good shot, you know? So that's, you know, that's my margin of error. Like I'm looking at the screen. Um, what can go wrong, hopefully has gone wrong. I've like pulled it too far right. I pulled it too far left and I'm not in any danger. So that's my play for this hole. You know, that's what I'm doing. So, you know, but there's going to be holes here. Let's talk about... hole that has kind of a smaller margin of error than that. Let's take it back all the way to Ikigai number eight. So, you know, we're talking, let's go back to the basics. Where's the danger? You know, there's water, there's no OB, there's trees. We could go long into the water. We could not clear the water. Um, just personal experience, I know a sapphire clears, especially in this wind, like may, probably a musket could clear. Maybe an accurate roll sapphire could clear. Uh, but I haven't tested that out, so I'm not going to try it. So we want to do something that we're certain of, right? I know this disc will clear the water. Um, if I'm being safe, you know, my play used to be, I think I already showed some of y'all this, but like the forehand I thought was really clever. You know, when I first came up with this line, I was like, haha, no one throws forehand here. And like it would settle, but I was kind of reliant on some luck for it to just stick or whatever you know and that's not what we want we don't want to rely on hitting a tree you know you're not off the tee box saying like yeah i'm aiming like right at that little tree i'm gonna freaking nail it i'm gonna have an eagle putt like that's not gonna happen like we're talking wide margins of error you know things can go wrong so you know like we have a narrow margin of error here so yeah, are you going to choose to go over the water here because you know it's going to clear? Um, you could also go 
to the right side. I know accurate skip musket. I'm sure a skip grace also gets down, gives you a look. Um, but just an air shot is fine. This is the widest margin of error. I mean, if we're being completely honest, um, a lot of people run eagles here. But but because I have like a line nailed down, I know that the sapphire is going to clear on that little skinny gap. Um, and to me, it's easily replicated. I've definitely missed before, and that hurts. Uh, I think in like Valley League and Global, I was playing like over here to the right because I knew it would be too painful for me to take a par here. I would much rather have uh, a birdie, you know, from a shot like this, you know, and then just lay it up. You know, sometimes you get great ground play and you're going to like actually attack the pin by going safe and wide, which is awesome, you know, because then it's a bonus. It's it's kind of about how you frame it in that way. But yeah, so I think it's I think most people would agree the smart decision is to not attack the eagle, but you know, how can you safely and smartly attack the eagle as well? Backhand extra glide recoil 50 50 C1. Not great, but fun. Yeah, and see, that's where, you know, I'm kind of talking about you have that itch to do the fun shot. So here, this wind, so this is a new wind. This wind is pushing me towards water. Um, my aim point is, my kind of stock aim point is down here. I know for a fact. Um, so to account for that means I'm turning the disc over or I'm aiming further to the right. But there's like a tree right here. It is very possible I hit this tree. So if I am... You know, being mindful of all my danger, what's the safest thing I can do? Like, obviously, this is the safe play, just like throwing it to the right. Um, but you're going to account for the wind. So this isn't a tutorial on just how to throw the hole. But I think you get just kind of, for your bag, what are you going to do that's yielding you a kind of repeatable result? And that really didn't bring in too much danger. It wasn't my straight pullback, like I... I already said that I prefer um, this has a margin of error, which I think of I think is probably obvious. A straight pullback is something that if it's straight, you know you're not off your line a little bit. Um, here, this hole comes to mind. Let's see if I can remember which one it is. Is it this one? Yeah, okay. So this is a hole that um, I think when everyone gets the rive, it's just like so easy to blast one straight. I don't actually like taking this gap because I think I hit these trees early and it's just not my favorite thing to do. But, you know, um, the Ballista Pro wouldn't always reach unless it was like a helping wind. And so, you know, I would see people do these lines that are like a forehand, like some crazy thing that kind of like the as the shot flexes out, it matches like the skinny gap, you know. There's like other ways you can do it too. But this is a hole that kind of feels like you need some kind of hocus pocus to hit the middle gap. But really like you don't, like you can just take something like a glide skip. I have my have my kind of aim point that I remember, which I don't know if I've said this already, but it helps to have an aim point that's like a kind of visual cue. You know, you want something that's easily remembered. Like, you know, when you're in the heat of the moment, you're not always thinking about, um, Okay, was it like this much angle or this much angle? Or was my aim point this limb or this limb? You know, like I used to have this line that was like this kind of boomerang shot, like what I was just describing. And I think it was hard for me to remember which of these three trees was my aim point. I could always kind of forget like, oh, it was this one. And you don't want that. You want something that's just like a, like a no-brainer. Um, like I know this kind of lower limb here is my plane for my shot for the height. Um, you know, I like a straight pullback, so that's what I'm doing. I'm not blasting it though. I'm kind of powering it down and I'm hitting the gap, you know, I'm trying to make the gap as big as possible. And that's just what works for me. A lot of people go <laughs> around the outside, you know, I'm kind of flying in the face of some of what I've already said, but like, but this is easy, right? It just doesn't always leave a putt. And unfortunately, after playing for so long, you just kind of get more aggressive. So 107 feet is definitely a shot I can make. You know, uh, there's times that I'm further out. There's times that I'm in the trees. I just kind of felt like the bounces and skips I was getting were more luck dependent than when I went down the middle. 
So that was my reasoning for taking that other shot. Um, but you know, you're going to have your own discs and shots and you're going to have your own reasoning for that. But that's kind of what I'm getting at. So we've talked about margin of error. You want to be mindful of what happens when you miss your line. The hole that just, you know, boggles my uh, risk management mind is Lost Island 8. This is a hole that I hate thinking about what happens when I miss my line because there's a lot of times when I hit my line perfect and then you end up in the mine shaft or <laughs> you you just, just something stupid happens. So this hole is fun and, you know, I have my aim point and I know what I'm going to do, um, but that doesn't mean something bad can't go wrong. So as you're in practice mode, as you're trying some of this stuff out, kind of like what I was saying already, if it works nine times out of 10, like that's a good thing. Cause sometimes just some freak accident happens. And this is a hole that even though it like can supremely piss me off, I just have to tell myself like you didn't do anything wrong. You know, sometimes just bad things happen and you know, that's just kind of the name of the game sometimes. So for your own mental game, you know, it helps to, know what can go wrong and you got to do your best to avoid all those things but there's times when it just will uh will go wrong anyway so but what's going to happen if i miss you know the glide turn arrive i'm actually well so the glide turn arrive was my favorite shot for a while on this because i felt like i had the widest margin of error turns over a little too much it still clears fades out a little too early you know it's still netting a very straight kind of um flight path so to me it felt very repeatable um but it was it's just it inevitably felt touchy so i had to at a certain point kind of say um you know how can i make this line better and i like the windbreak glide drive i like this big anheuser it this again you know it's flying in the face of some of what i've already said but that's where you have to make decisions for your game so the like the turn glide was great for a straight pullback. Uh, it wasn't great for just like things that I felt like just would happen on their own, things out of my control. The wind break I feel like gives me more control. Um, I'm aiming at this dead guy's neck, maybe a little bit to the left of his neck. Um, I have my I have my aim point. It's easily remembered. Uh, my angle of release. I like thinking of kind of the Wi-Fi nubs. I. It's it's hard to think of a better name for it, but there's lines I have where I'm like, I'm gauging the the width of the nub that's left, you know. So like, is the nub totally covered? Is it poking out? Is there like a little bit more kind of nubbing out, you know? So like, you have your own kind of styles of memorizing something, but it helps to. Oh, that was too much turn. Playing with the nubs too much. Just forgot what I was trying to do. But yeah, it helps. It helps to have your aim points, and then and then when you're talking things out of your control, like you want to bring control back into your game. You know, this is a wind I would lay up, and like I wouldn't feel bad about it. I think most people wouldn't feel bad about it. But like, you know, we're talking danger. You know, where are the where's the danger on this hole? There's water. There's OB. There's all sorts of things. There's a mine shaft. Um, so when you're laying up, you know, forehand out into the open, it's short enough to not go in the water. Um, usually I like to be a little further left to open up the gap, but like, it's fine. Second shot, what can go wrong? This is a whole, another one where it's really tempting to throw over the water because it cuts the corner, but you know, what can go wrong? You know, I, I've tried cutting the corner just out of impatience and then you end up, you know, wet and then you're throwing from the shoreline and it's even harder. So, you know, not cutting the corner is the smarter play, even if it's not like the most highly executed shot like we're taking danger out of play and you can still get down there for the birdie and like that's cool all right yeah the danger is sometimes going too far right and that's where i felt like the turn glide wasn't the best choice because my margin of error was like oh oops i just did read through like my margin of error was kind of bringing that in to play. So I would much rather have the disc Kaiser out and like hit a wall and settle down than go too far over or be turned over. You know what I mean? Okay. 
So what can happen if you miss your line? Let's go to another just difficult hole. Let's go to Northern Lights 3. This is the new, I don't know if it's the hardest hole in the game, but it's up there. One of the widest score separators in the game. So widest margin of error as possible. Um, so what's that mean for you? For me, it means either going backhand or forehand sapphire. This is a headwind. So my normal play is a forehand here. I'll do like a little flexor. And it flexes down kind of to around the middle. This wind is pushing me. It's going gonna, it's gonna to shorten up a forehand. It's going to push it too far right. If I'm shorter, it's going to make the approach harder. So, you know, backhand will give me more distance than a forehand would. I know that this one tree is the one thing I got to miss. If I hit this hillside, I just kind of bounce off, which is awesome. And then I'm 636 feet away, which seems like you'd have to blast something, but you don't. I'm going to go glide roll. I'm actually going to go accurate glide. I'm going to shape the fairway. I'm not throwing over the water. I hope you know. I hope you can know. Where's the danger? It's the water. I'm not bringing that in. Uh, this happens all. I see it all the time. The ground play on this hole sucks. You throw a backhand and you and you you land in the fairway and you slide right off into the water down there by the basket. So that's why I'm trying to shape the fairway a little bit more. This is hopefully not misjudged. It's pushing a little long, but that's okay. And then here I am. Um, something when I'm taking, you know, mental notes on a hole, elevation is one of those things. You know, you want your margin of error for your putt to be kind of calculated in a similar way. Like, What's what? Where's the danger for this putt? Like it's right behind the the basket, obviously. Um, but what could go wrong? Uh, if I aim high, I could skip off. I could skip off and go into the water. If I miss low, it's uh, snow, so it will hopefully stick, but it might not. If I'm not 100%, just take a par, right? Because there's going to be people on your card not taking par here. They're going to be taking a bogey. Uh, there's people getting birdies for sure, but you know. Again, what's what's going to be better for your mental game? What's setting you up for success? I think taking a confident par is better than like running it and then feeling like bad for yourself and then you know taking that energy into the next hole and then maybe making a mistake. So I know what I want to do here. Um, just going to be a matter of executing it. If I miss, that's okay because I tried to not put too much power on it. And then there you go. So I did take a par, but I didn't do it in a way that, um, you know, was was unplanned, I guess. All right. So, you know, this is kind of going, let's see. There's going to be lines in this game that are touchy. And I usually like to avoid touchy lines because touchy to me means lucky, right? Like you're just hoping it works out. Um, and sometimes it just doesn't work out. So you want to find a line that doesn't feel like if you're off by like a smidge, you're just screwed. You want a line that feels like if I'm off by a smidge, like I'm going to be okay. And this hole is hard. So those smidges matter. But um, but I hope you know what I mean. Like there's holes where like, here, actually, I know this hole is like difficult and it's worth so, but this is kind of what I'm talking about. So the second shot here, we're talking being off by a smidge. So if I'm if I'm trying to match the shape of the fairway, if I'm off by a smidge and I go forehand, I'm probably still hitting the fairway. If I'm going backhand and I'm off by a smidge, um, I'm I'm short in the water. I'm long in the water. Uh, maybe I hit a rock on the shoreline. Um, so to me, like I just like. And then what's the wind doing? The wind is going to push me along. It's going to make me kind of hyzer out. I want to give it width because I know it's going to hyzer back. Normally, I, and again, I know my normal aim point, but you just, if, if you're making an educated guess, you want to know what could go wrong. I'm probably not going to go long off the other shore. I'm just going to do this and hope it works out. And that's actually, you know, that's great. So there you go. Here, let's go. Let's wind it back. So what's my margin of error here? We'll go Pioneer because this is a little shorter. So 
to keep it straight, I'm going to have to aim low. Here, I'll go sapphire. Let's see if I can. So I'm calculating a lot more because I have to land in the middle of the fairway. Um, let's just see if this works. Am I going to get a bad break? I did not. I think you could imagine like me hitting those rocks would just yield a terrible result though. I'm also bringing, I'm so close to that tree too. Okay. So here I'm, I'm hyzering out a little bit early. What's going to go wrong? Is anything going to go wrong? Okay. I settled down. I'm behind a bush. Can't really help that. So again, we're calculating margin of error here. This might go in the water. Yeah, see? So that's, you know, to me, this is an easier, an easier kind of choice, an easier decision. I'm over, I'm over just a safe area the whole way. If I hit this rock, what's gonna happen? Like I'm not kicking into the water. I'm fading into the fairway still. That's just kind of what I'm talking about. That's the decision to me that, you know, I'm always gonna throw over the fairway on this hole. I'm not gonna throw like over here. Um, <laughs> Charlie, you completely ignore this stuff. Like, are you just like, you're just kind of like, oh, I'm going to pin it or whatever. Like, what are you thinking? I'd be curious. Um, Cause I know pinning it, you know, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like you don't have to, like for me, like this wind is really, it's pushing me towards the basket. But like, usually I feel like I'm at least a hundred feet out on this hole. I'm like hardly ever within like C2 or something. So here, so this is just to kind of give you all an idea. If I'm playing this hole like I normally would. So similar idea, I'm shaping the fairway. I'm gonna leave myself a longer putt, but that's what I want because pushing along the fairway narrows as it gets closer to the basket. By pushing it long, you're also gaining speed. Um, I know I can take off about, you know, 20 feet worth of power because of this drop in elevation. So that's something I'm taking into consideration. Ooh, just barely off, but you know what I mean? I drop right down and then it's a par, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Okay, so you're testing your lines out, you know, try it with different discs, try it with all sorts of things, you know, just keep tweaking, but you know, trust it. Um, you know, some lines work great and some wins and some don't, you know, I'm talking about forehand off the tee here. Sometimes, it, you know, I want to make sure I'm far enough down the fairway that it's an easy approach. If it's a big headwind. I'm not just going to do my Sapphire play again. I'm going to try and go backhand. I'm going to try and still be safe, taking all the stuff into consideration. Um, I'm, I may play this game a lot. And I may have a pretty good idea of just everything that could go wrong since I've been, you know, I play through the holes frequently. But, um, but you know, there's still going to be times I'm making an educated guess. And I think the better you get at those, you know, really it's not about having the best judgment in the world. It's just about knowing where the danger is and avoiding it. All right. So I think in the future, it'll be really fun to have a kind of like uh, a, uh, an event code where we can like play through something together. I think that would be really fun just to kind of talk about, you know, what can go wrong and why. I think just for the purposes of this, if you guys want, we can play through Highlanders Ridge real quick because this course is still very fresh. Um, it's not like the most dangerous. I mean, there's danger places, but it's not like Northern Lights or something where um, you really need to like know your lines or whatever. This is a fun one to just play around on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, let's go there right now. So we're going to be mindful of everything. You know, hole one. Where's the danger? There is danger. You know, obviously this OB line. I know people can throw through OB um, and and still pin it. But you know, I'm not trying to pin it if it means I'm doing something like that. It's risky. So I'm just going to take my pioneer. 
I already know I already kind of have an idea of lines here, but I'm just kind of showing you my thought process. I'm I'm curving the fairway. I gotta aim in low. So if I okay, so just in my head, if something like that happens, I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is too much disc. Maybe I need to aim a little lower so I get more ground play to slow it down. Yeah, that slowed down more before I hit the rock. And there's OB behind the rock, so I know like if I'm going into the rock that quick, it's very likely, you know, something bad could go wrong, especially in like a tailwind or something. It's good to have a line that works in different winds if you can help it, just so you don't have to make too many adjustments. But so yeah, so there you go. So that's gonna that's this is my play on this hole. Um, I want to get to hole two because that one for me was a mind boggler when I was trying to have an idea of just what to do on it. Let's go there. Hole two is one of those rare holes where running the basket is the safe play <laughs> because I was trying to just find a way to lay up and be safe. And like, it's so hard to do that. Um, just check this out. So there's these rocks right here guarding. And then, Ooh, like it's just so touchy, not going into the mud pit. And I felt like, you know, like, like, how do I, you know, I was in my head thinking, okay, I'm just going to lay up a hole like this because going in the mud sucks. But then laying up, you're just so far away. It's downhill. There's mud directly behind the basket. Like, there's all these things that can go wrong. Um, and it's just a way tougher shot than just kind of running the basket and maybe getting an ace, which is just so crazy. But, you know, those are the decisions that, or, you know, whatever. Straight pullback. If I can help it, I can't help it in this wind. You know, what's going to go wrong? Like, really nothing much is going to go wrong because you're playing a backstop and it's jettisoning you to this other backstop. So, yeah, it's, it's, this is one, this is a, this is a fun hole. It is like a strange design for that reason. But I think you get the idea. Even something like that, which is outside of my margin of error, it's still safe. So, like, that's cool. All right, hole number three. Let's check it out. Okay, so where's the danger on this hole? There's water. It's really tempting to throw over the water. Um, if you're playing this hole for the first time, I feel like the first thing I did was like, oh, let's see if I can clear that. And I think that's worth knowing because sometimes water isn't like that big a deal. Um, and yeah, it looks like we're going to easily clear that. So maybe it isn't something. Oh, but we hit a tree. What's that? There's a little tree action. So now, so now you kind of are narrowing it down. You know, we're playing guess who. Um, so if you aim this way, you want to clear the water. But if you're too high, you could actually go in the water. And you know, there's this tree right here. This is not the widest gap. I mean, look at this gap over here, right? Um, so let's try that out. Let's see what happens when we go this way. Um, I know this isn't fair because we've already played this course. I'm not playing it for the first time. But check that out. That worked out pretty well. Um, I am fading back towards the water. So that, that's a little less ideal. Like, so if my margin of error is just I put it a little too straight, then, you know, uh oh, like bringing water into play. So, you know, maybe the smart move isn't to, you know, match the fairway. Maybe the smart move is to, like, try and clear. We can still clear and be safe, you know. We know the disc is going to turn. Even if we hit this tree, we're going to clear the, clear the water. And I know eagle on this hole is possible. Um, you know, there's a small little island over here. So are we going to run the island? You know, is that the smartest choice you can make? You know, or there's like this land, like literally right over here. You know, what's the harder shot? Like throwing over the rock, hitting some tree limbs to slow us down, trying to stick the green, not sliding off the back or not falling into the kind of crick. You know, so, or, or could we just do this? You know what I mean? We, if we go long, nothing bad will happen. If we're short, nothing bad will happen. If we miss a little left or right, nothing bad will happen. 
there's all sorts of things that could go wrong by going this way. So, you know, if you're laying up, why not just take the outside route? You know, less things can go wrong. All right, hole number four. This is another one. All right, risk reward. And this tailwind is just juicy. So are we going to run it? <laughs> what do you think? Is that the smart choice? You're in multiplayer, you know, and you're multiplayer, you're in the Pro Tour, you're playing Hops and Heiser, you know, like these little strokes add up. So maybe we want to highlight, but there's times when, you know, you're playing, you're playing around and if you get, a, if you get, if you try to get a highlight and you miss, like you're losing way more than if you went for it. So, um, as I've been trying to figure out how to attack this hole, cause it's still a little new, what I've been kind of realizing is I'm not trying to get on the bridge cause there really isn't a benefit to being on the bridge. It does get you closer, but it does kind of like cut off your line of sight a little bit. Like it's hard to see you're, you're throwing up here. Let me get up on there and then you can kind of see kind of just what I mean. Am I going to reach it? We'll get there. You could always miss getting on the bridge, obviously. Try one more time. Here we go. I'm going to be on the bridge this time. Okay, so you made it on the bridge. You know, huzzah. Um, you can see the pin. You're throwing from elevation. I mean, this is a tailwind, so like, this isn't this isn't like that easy of a shot. You know, imagine if you threw the forehand like I did on my first time, and you ended up like back here. You know, this is, this gives you a little bit wider of an angle. You know, you can see more of the green. You can lay up like more to the left if you want, which is what I'm going to do. And that's great. You know, whatever. Here we are. So that's just, you know, getting on the bridge doesn't matter maybe as much as you think it does. Um, if it wasn't a big tailwind, you can just put it a little lower and it'll still clear and then it, you won't be pushing along into the bushes and the fence and everything. So next hole, let's see what we got. Okay. So this isn't a Mando necessarily, like you could throw, over there, although I actually haven't tried that. I doubt it's worth it, <laughs> but it might be. I won't do it on the stream and embarrass myself. But like, let's just treat this like a triple Mando, right? So this is, it's important we hit the Mando. We wanna get, we wanna push straight, you know, where's the danger? You know, I've played this enough to know that if you try and put it high to get around the corner and, and push forward towards the basket, like you can hit this rock wall. So I really wanna push it straight. I don't think pushing it, see, I pushed, I had that low and even that didn't make it with this tailwind. So we're gonna adjust my aim point here. You know, we definitely wanna push it straight then. It could have been even straighter and it would have still worked out. Probably would have been even better. So here, let's do this. Okay, I kind of went towards that, but not like, and then, yeah, so we're opening up our gap towards this throw in or whatever. So, yeah, so this isn't like danger, like you're throwing over water. I mean, you are, but, but yeah, it's more about just a position play, opening up your angle. You get the idea. I'm gonna move on to the next hole after this. Booyah. Yeah. Yeah. I see you rich. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Slippery greens are important. Being mindful of that is definitely important. So just knowing kind of where they are and avoiding it is helpful for show. Okay. So a hole like this. So it's 300 feet. You know, if you're like me, you kind of know where the aim points are for acing a hole. Um, and that can kind of cloud your judgment as far as like distances. 
like when I see 300, the first thing I think is, oh, that's like a sapphire distance, right? But, you know, there's danger behind the basket. This is a triple mando. We have to throw through there. We can't just like play some high stall shot and get around the corner. Like we have to go through here. So, you know, river clears, especially in a tailwind like this, it's going to clear great. So I'm just going to, that's not a river that I'm holding, no. It's just kind of pop it up there. It's stuck. You know, it's not glamorous. I'm honestly really close to the OB there. So let's try it again. See if I can keep it a little tighter. That's great. This is a really tiny green. So you kind of want that pinpoint accuracy. If you have like a warship in your bag, something that maybe in this wind would be good. I could also go really low. There's a lot of ways you can like use a disc to make a line work. I mean, you had your set line, maybe it's just like a river aimed low. It's gonna turn, but you know it's going to settle on the land. Yeah, so there's a lot of ways you can do it. But I like fairway here, like seven speed. <laughs> the anger management stream. I think this stuff, like honestly, um, kind of helps with my anger. Kind of like what I was saying, if you have a game plan and it doesn't work out, you can sometimes just chalk that up to just freak luck rather than a bad game plan. And and although that's like a different kind of frustration, like, oh, like nothing I did was wrong, like that sucks. It is like liberating in another way because you know you didn't make like a stupid move. It just was like something out of your control, so. But anger management's important. I know seeing my ELO points slide away at times makes me very angry, but um, you know, meditation's great for that. Taking a step back. Ooh. All right, I didn't really talk about this hole any. So let's just tap out and then we'll restart. All right, so we're on. So it's another island green. There's a down slope on the backside. It's like a mound. So, you know, what can go wrong? You know, I think this is another, you know, you're talking about ace run distances. This is 450 feet. You're thinking, okay, this is a rive hole, but like maybe it's not, maybe you can still go accurate, which is what I did the first time I threw it. You know, you, your sapphire is gonna reach it's downhill. Um, it's not a roll attribute but it's going to slide up the hill and it's going to be okay and that you know slower put using the hill to your advantage helping you slow down versus something like this where let's say you're just trying to like base it right you just want this to settle right at the base of the basket you know what can go wrong here it's a faster disc you know maybe it rolls off the backside. maybe you with a tailwind glance off the top and just keep going You know, this is a reason why a line like this might not work. And, you know, when I'm talking about using barriers to your advantage, like this is a hole that I'm kind of talking about. Like the play on your play on this hole probably shouldn't be, I'm just going to blast my arrive fast into this low wall on the backside because I know that will catch me because that won't work out all the time. Like, check that out. Like, almost identical to the shot I had right before it, but it just got a bad skip. So how can we avoid that? Just by taking a slower disc, letting it settle into the hillside, you're going to be left with kind of a touchy putt because this is a tough green, but at least that way, you're bringing as much into your control as possible. So I think you get the idea. And then see if I get a bad roll. Ooh. But that wouldn't have been my fault. That would have just been some kind of bull crap with that. Maybe you made me mad or but I had to deal with, but it's okay. There you go. Again, I'm being mindful of elevation, kind of taking mental notes there, just how far uphill something may be. So there's no OB on this hole. There is water. There's this creek kind of cutting through the middle. So we need to go big or we need to go short enough to lay up. So we can go big on our second shot, but there's danger behind the basket. My advice wouldn't be to lay up short because you're going to have to 
disk up on that approach. And that is more difficult to do. It's pretty brainless to just clear this creek. So, you know, this wind is neutral.
helpful for you all to do a little bit of that yourself and just figure out, you know, what's my favorite way to get a look at a birdie or eagle that's not incorporating too much danger. Um, I do want to open it up for some questions. I know I've been talking for just like ever. You know, I hope it's not boring, but you know, but is there, is there a whole, is there like something that you all would like me to kind of discuss a little bit and maybe kind of break down or, you know, as far as risk management goes, is there something that you think needs addressing? I know I ran some of my notes by other players and, you know, they made, they made a point to talk about, you know, know your miss. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Cool. Okay. I think knowing your miss is important. Um, and I tried to touch on that, just like what could go wrong, you know, having the data to kind of back it up. So yeah, does anybody? Nice. There we go. Trying to get my head in the screen. So yeah, is there uh, is there anything you guys would want me to kind of break down or discuss or you have any questions? How often am I running aces? And there's courses that I kind of know. Here, that's actually probably a good point. So. This is something I think about. So Harring Woods, you know, holes one through three, I know can be aced. I don't have a, I don't have an accurate skip grace in my bag. So it's, it's something that I'm kind of picking and choosing when I'm running aces. Um, so Mark, and I can't say his last name, but MM93, um, you know, was was asking me, I think, about comeback putts, about how, um, you know, when you're playing for the ace, you have to be prepared to make your comeback putt. And, you know, how do you choose your, your how do you pick your battles with something like that, right? And I think for me, it's just a matter of being comfortable with, you know, knowing I can make a, make a putt from a certain distance. But you kind of see here, like, when you're running an ace on a hole like this, there's OB behind the basket. There's these trees, like there's luck involved. And I know that's not, um, sometimes you sometimes you can get through without impact. I don't know if I will now, okay. But there's holes with the roll rive. See, this is another hole that, yeah, I like ace running with the rive at times, but then the things that can go wrong are just so, um, like check that out. So now I'm OB. So like that was my ace run, quote unquote. Yeah, you can go high spike, Kaiser. So yeah, so really it's just about, is it worth going for, you know? Um, and, and there's holes where I think it is because there isn't danger behind the basket. There's holes where I think um, it is not worth it. So like powering woods one through three, I usually don't ace run because there's just always just some junk behind the basket that can mess up my throw in. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like if I, if I know I'm going to be able to make my putt, if there isn't just junk behind the basket, then I'm running it. So like Coyote Canyon eight, for example, like there isn't like bad luck behind the basket. If I'm running this ace, I'm not bringing this tree into play this one. Um, if I go long, I'm not going OB because the OB is very deep. Like I'm just running it. And if it goes in, that's great. Oof. And if it doesn't, I, you know, I'm not totally screwed. You know, there's a whole like Oak Hill 2, which is almost the same like shot. It's almost exactly the same shot. Um, but like there's a downslope behind the basket. So in a wind like this, like this might be a wind where I'm like second guessing, like, do I really want to run this? So I'm, you know, this is a moment where, you know, you hyper analyze like, okay, this wind is pushing me down the hill if I miss. Uh, it's a tail cross. So it's going to give me a lift. It's going to push me far. If I'm ace running this, I need to aim a little lower. I'm going to keep my same line, you know, and I hope it goes in. 
it doesn't go in, you know, uh, then I'm, lo I'm stuck with a long comeback putt. Here, let's see if I can get, I don't want to get the ace. I just want to get a miss so you can kind of see like, yeah. So like, this is what could go wrong, right? This is actually going really bad, but I think you get the idea. Um, there's times when it's worth it for me to have a comebacker like this. Like if I'm behind in the multiplayer and I have to run this hole to get a tie, you know, I don't want to lose points. If I'm losing points anyway. I'm running something like this. Um, if it's the pro tour and there's like a two win like that, then I'm definitely not running the ace. Like there's just, there's not a benefit. Like there's probably other holes and safer scenarios where I'll be able to make that stroke up. And that's something that is hard to do. It's hard to trust that there will be other opportunities to gain strokes, but that's where risk management comes into play. You want to, and it doesn't always work out. You know, you're kind of, you know, it's crossing your fingers, hoping the layout is going to give you another opportunity, but, and sometimes it doesn't, but there are times when it does, you know, you'll get a whole like lakeside one and then you get the ACE there and you make up that stroke that, ended up being a way smarter decision than running the ace on Oak Hill 2, you know. Um, I see Frozen Valley 4 and Crow's Nest 4, sir. Frozen Valley 4, I love this hole. Oops, let's go back. So, Frozen Valley has all sorts of danger, but I love this course because you can really choose kind of what to do. So, What's the safe play? You know, where's the danger? There's OB, uh, there's a lot of water and ice, you know? So if you want the birdie every time, I mean, I'm just gonna tell you like, there's two ways to do it. You can either get a seven speed. I like my river here. An explorer would probably work even better because it won't flip as much. But just kind of like give it hyzer. It doesn't have enough speed to find the, uh, the water. You're just gonna like kind of settle on this ice. You know, as long as you hit your line decent. It's not giving you an eagle look. In a tailwind, it will. You know, maybe that's a little touchy. Maybe you don't want that. And you can just kind of like pitch it over. You know, and there's your birdie. Uh, there's winds where I don't trust that. So like, if it's like a three wind. This isn't a three wind. There we go. I'm not throwing a river in this wind, you know, I'm going rive. I am aiming to, I know this will clear, but you know, I want to be close enough to have an angle at the basket. There isn't danger by going long. So I'm just aiming low. I'm aiming to clear the ice and the water. And that worked out. And then you're going to have just this kind of like routine upshot. River will work here. And then there's your birdie, you know. So like birdie here plays great. There's going to be, um, you know, lots of elite players going for eagle, you know, myself included, and they're going to miss. Um, my eagle play, which is something, you know, you love, you love finding a line that works great for you, you know, thinking outside the box, something that just is like, suits your bag, suits your game, you know? So for me, you know, I, I find, I found my aim point on this hole. I like aiming between the, these two kind of like water things, cracks in the ice, aim low with the, this isn't a roll attribute but because I know my pioneer is a nine speed. It's just not gonna push as long as a musket might going to fade back and avoid these kind of gaps in the ice it's going to be short enough to you know settle up before the water in this ice here a little long and you know in, in crosswinds where it slows my disc down i may be a little further back but i have the line dialed enough to where i know i'm going to be safe you know so like if the wind is ever if for some reason I just am not feeling like I want to lay up straight with that glide rule rive, like I showed you before, maybe, you know, I just go the pioneer and it works great because I'm just familiar with it. It's like this wind. So this is my aim point in a neutral wind. This wind is turning me over, slowing me down. I'm going to aim a little left. 
Not a lot, just a little, because it's a two end. You know, you could also aim a little higher, but you know, I'm just kind of making my gut decision here. That was a bad reaction. See, that was my fault. And there I go. So, you know, I missed my line. And now I'm going to get a par probably. So, yeah, if, if you want to get strokes on folks, um, you're playing a numbers game. You know, the numbers game on this hole is you get the birdie, um, you might be netting more strokes on a card than going for the eagle, which can seem counterproductive. But, you know, I like to see people, you know, tee off, and then it helps me make a decision as far as should I go for it? Is it worth going for? If I'm going to lose by a stroke because they got eagle and I played safe and got birdie, I should have just gone for the eagle anyway because I might have tied them. You know, those are things to be mindful of. It helps to have multiple game plans so that you can kind of, you know, let that affect your decision making. And that wasn't wide enough. But I think you get the idea. So let's see. Crow's Nest 4 was another one that Dan asked for. Here, I can show you that real quick. Okay. So, for the longest time, my play on this hole was to go high. I had my aim point. It was like this: the clouds move, so it's hard because to practice it, you kind of just have to like restart a lot. But I had my point in the clouds. I use like a glide roll or a light glide. This wind is like helping, so like I would just kind of and let's see, it's gonna push me, and then I would just need to get a good reaction off that kind of wall. You know, I was dependent on a good reaction off the wall. And then you had to make like a longer throw in, you know, a birdie every time. Maybe I get an eagle. You know, this is, you know, before I was maybe a little bit better. So like the eagle felt really good on this hole, you know. But the worst that would happen is I get birdie because you're shaping the fairway. You're not playing over OB. Um, you know, it's just kind of like easy, right? But then, you know, before they added these rocks, going over the top was really, it was even easier. You could like air it out with like a glide skip or like glide, I forget now. But nowadays, going over the top, to me, it makes more sense in most scenarios because, you know, we're talking about what's the worst that can go wrong. Well, the worst thing that can happen is like that right there. You get bad luck. And, you know, out of bounds usually is a terrible thing, and it is. But then your birdie putt is like 50 feet. So it's like not that big a deal, you know, just, okay, there's my birdie. Um, this is situational, but I do prefer just going over the top because I feel like that worst case scenario, I get a birdie. Whenever you go wide, there is a chance that you go over the lip, you go over the edge or just something happens. I've had it happen to me. And definitely going roller over the top, I've, I've missed the gap. And then I have to rethrow, and then it kind of sucks. But that's me like weighing my options. And you know, there's times kind of like what I've said already, like you make a conscious choice. Um, you live with that choice, you know, sometimes it's within your control, sometimes it's not. But gives you peace with the decision you make, I guess, at a certain level. It gives me peace knowing that if I, if, if I just get a bad break or I mess it up, like, oh, well, I did, like, what I thought was the right decision. You know, I thought I made an educated choice. It didn't work out. Like, whatever. So I almost always risk going just over the top. I feel like, for me, it works well enough to just keep doing it. And And, I'd, and this is a hole where I'd rather not have to account for the elevation and the wind for like the throw in, I'd rather just have the easy put in. So, but you know, again, different game plans, different bags, different holes. You know, Dan, you might, you know, have a way more consistent eagle line going around the corner or sorry, taking the fairway, you know, and that's, you know, good for you. So, anybody else? Anybody have uh, thoughts? possible uh, holes they want to see kind of breaking down mm -hmm. for sure 
well, guys, this has been almost two hours long. So um, please, you know, go back through the video. If there's sections that kind of speak to you, let me just recap everything real quick. Uh, for risk management, what I see as most important would be knowing where the danger is, knowing where the luck is on a hole, knowing how the wind brings those into play, uh, knowing that the line you choose is simple and can be easily uh, replicated. It isn't like a touchy thing. It's something you can kind of grip and rip and know that you have a wide margin of error. Knowing what happens if you miss your line helps you choose a better line. And then just you know fiddling with it to know uh, what all the outp outcomes could be with different discs, uh, knowing what gives you just the most consistent look at birdie, even if that means not parking it, but still being close enough to get it in there. So thank you everyone who, who tuned into this first kind of iteration, this first clinic. Um, I know it took us a hot minute to get it going, but we're working on that. We really wanted to focus more on getting it started rather than kind of dragging our feet while we try and get it just absolutely perfect. So thank you everybody for, for checking us out and bearing through the mistakes. Um, I hope it's helpful in kind of any little way. Uh, let us know your comments and thoughts and stuff. We have an email that we set up. It is hello.8bitbirds at gmail.com. So hello dot the number eight b i t b i r d s at gmail.com. Um, I can't put it in the chat because I'm not logged into YouTube. Uh, more noob mistakes for the first stream, but that's okay. Um, and we have an Instagram too, if you want to check it out. We uh, don't have anything up, but we might take some tidbits from the video. Um, but yeah, thank you all. You know, I hope this helps. Um, please give us suggestions for something else to talk about, other things to stream and you know do clinics on, and we'll get it rocking. So see you guys out in the valley. Peace out.